Okay guys and gals, I'm Brandon and today I'm going to talk about the top five mistakes that I see people make when installing siding. A little about me, I have about 15 years of experience working with siding. A lot of that was vinyl siding, the majority of it was vinyl siding, some fiber cement, some wood. Uh, today we're more focused on vinyl but there's going to be something in here for fiber cement and wood too. So uh, you're going to want to stick around for number one because number one can cost thousands. In fact, I I did some work on a house that I they paid me ten thousand dollars to do a bunch of repairs because of this. So you want, you're you gonna wanna stick around for number one or just skip forward to it if you don't wanna deal with it. All right, so, um, like I said, I have about 15 years of experience with siding. Uh, I figure that's about 175 miles of vinyl siding that I have personally installed myself. So that's like, from New Hampshire to New York. So I've seen a few things, I've done a few things, and you know I'm here to share my knowledge with you guys and hopefully save you from making some of the mistakes, hopefully help you out. If you look at my videos, they're all unedited. This is how they go up. Um, a lot of them I'm wearing my GoPro. I'm not used to being on this side of the camera, but yeah. I'm gonna get right into it then. Uh, so number five would be poor choices of trim. Where siding ends at the end of a wall, at a window edge, a roof edge or your eave edge. I've seen people use pieces of trim that were not intended to be used there. And I recognize that there's many different ways to do things, but some ways just look better than other ways, okay? So there's a industry standard for what type of trim to use, F-channel, undersill, J-channel. And in my videos, you'll see what kinds of pieces that I choose. There's also ways to go up above and beyond too. Like you can go and put lineals, which is, uh, they have different architectural types of trim for vinyl, where if you have a gable, you can put a lineal and it'll look like a piece of wood going up the roof edge and back down. Uh, around a window, you can also put those lineals to dress it up, make the window look wider. And so there's lots of different choices. So I recommend looking into those. Um, so moving on to number four would be not fitting pieces correctly. Now in between a corner and a window or a corner and a corner, any two fixed objects where you have a cut piece of siding, you want to leave a room on either end for the siding to expand and contract. What I did with my friend is we did a test in the winter. We took a piece from outside, it was 20 degrees out, brought it inside, we put it by the heater and measured the piece. It went from 40 inches to 40 and a quarter by heating up, okay? So you can imagine if you put it tight in between those two, the siding will expand, but it's got nowhere to go now. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna go out. And that's when you have oil canning, okay? So if you get down at a vantage point, kind of at an angle with the house, you'll see all these bubbles, all these ripples going down the siding. And a lot of times it was put in tight between two objects. Um, another thing that's kind of related is your stair pattern or your joint pattern when you have um, when you have multiple pieces of siding in a run okay on this house here they did a pattern where 
they just went like this, maybe about two feet apart, maybe a foot apart. What happens if you put all your joints like that is each piece, each overlap, you lose like a sixteenth of an inch, okay? And it's really hard to not do that. I think most people don't realize that it's even happening. You might lose a 30 second, but if you do that on each piece and you put all your joints in the same spot, you'll start out at the bottom like this. By the time you get to the top, you're going like this, okay? And the next thing you know, your siding is going like that. And pieces are also bubbling because now you're forcing that piece to bend and you're trying to stretch the bottom and you're bunching the top. So again, that material that has to go somewhere, it goes out, okay? So those are two, the two things with not fitting the pieces correctly. And again, you wanna check with your, I didn't say this, but you're gonna to wanna to check with your manufacturer to see the proper gappage on all the edges. Most of the time it's a quarter inch. Um, but definitely check with your type of siding that you're using. Some require different gaps than others. Um, one note is if you see me shifting a lot, I actually just had um, a cortisone shot today. I have some problems with my back and hoping it helps. Um, and I'm not a professional at this at video. I got my cheat sheet right here. You probably noticed it. Okay, so number three would be not clipping the pieces in. Not clipping them in all the way or not clipping them in all together, okay? So what you wanna do, and you'll see in my videos, I clip it in, clip it in, you'll hear a very subtle click and you'll feel it move a little bit more quickly, okay? And it's very subtle. Some people it's more subtle, some people it's not. Some people it's obvious. It all depends on the installer. Um, so I make sure that piece is fully engaged and that you're nailing towards the top of the slot. I'll go into that um, in the next thing. And so also what can happen is the, the bottom clip, the bottom of the piece of siding, you can see this is a piece of siding right here. You can probably see this joint here. On the bottom is like a U and that U has a back of it and this would be the face, right? Sometimes that clip is formed too short. So I've clipped in pieces and, excuse me, then I go to nail it and it just falls back out. Well, that back clip wasn't formed right. I've had to send batches back before. It's really uncommon, but it can happen. So that's one thing you wanna pay attention to. And uh, let's see. Where was I at? Losing my train of thought. See, you'll you'll see this in my videos. This is not going to be edited, guys. I don't have the time, the expertise to edit these things. Um, mostly, I just don't have the time. So, okay. So, if you have a four-inch piece of siding, if you have a four-inch reveal siding, which is between here and there, and here and there, okay. You clip that piece in, and what you want to do is check the, from the middle of the last piece to the bottom of the next piece that you just put in. After you nail it, nail it on first, and then check. If you have four and a half reveal siding, it should measure four and a half from the middle rib to the bottom of the next piece. If it's four, it should be four inches from there. You could check from there to there, you'd, you'd be nine inches if it was four and a half reveal, because it's a double four. That might get confusing to some people. Um, and then there's also a five inch reveal siding, there's a six inch reveal, and that's how big the laps are in the siding, okay? So 
until you get the hang of it, you're going to want to, every few pieces, just measure from there to there and just confirm that you're staying on your true layout. Again, there are manufacturing variations. I've seen sometimes if it's supposed to be four inch reveal, it might be four and eighth. Sometimes I've seen it be three and seven eighths and the clip is just formed not quite right. So it's holding the piece down, but the clip's fully engaged. You know, you're good to go. Okay. So that's clipping the pieces in. Um, and what I was going on before was improper nailing. This would be number two, improper nailing. Now, when you nail side, vinyl siding, you can't nail it tight. You have to leave a little gap between the back of the nail head and the hem, the nail hem of the piece of siding. And that's again, to let the siding expand and contract. If you nail it tight, it's the same as putting it in between two objects that won't move. The other way you can mess that up is put it to the inside of the slots. And again, it's got nowhere to go if you nail on this edge of the slot, on this side, this edge of the slot on that side, it's got nowhere to go between those two nails. And you have to nail the center of the slot. That way it can move freely. Okay, now another thing is vertically actually. And this kind of ties in with not clipping the pieces fully in, except for not quite. You'll see what I mean in a minute. If you put the point of the nail at the top of the nail slot, it'll put a little positive tension upwards on the nail slot, which is okay. It's not gonna stop the piece from sliding unless you nick that nail slot a little bit, then it won't be able to move quite as easy. You wanna aim for more towards the middle vertically as well. Um, so what can happen if, here's another way to mess up, okay? If you start on this end and you put the point of the nail at the bottom of the nail slot, that nail is gonna go in, it's wedge shaped, and it's actually gonna move the siding down just like a 30 second on this nail. And then you're gonna move that siding down a 30 second with each consecutive nail. By the end of the piece, you could be a half inch down and right out of the clip. And now that piece is flopping in the wind, okay? What I've seen people do is nail this end, walk to that end, lift it up, nail that end, walk to the middle, nail that, and then fill in in between. And now you know it's locked in those three points you're probably not gonna push it down out of the clip. Uh, another thing to know is to check your state and local building codes. With nailing, it depends on where you live sometimes. Sometimes you have high wind loads and you might require nailing into studs. Sometimes you might, have, you might live near the ocean, they require stainless steel. So you definitely wanna check your manufacturer's instructions and your building codes and make sure that you're using the ones that supersede the next. So some of those are minimum required requirements. So if they, if they go above and beyond, you wanna go with those. Some commercial jobs, engineers and architects will get involved and they'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Sometimes you gotta screw this stuff on. So. Definitely check with those. And now we're on to number one. It's getting a little dark out. Hopefully it's not too granular now. Um, number one is, and I don't know if I already said this in this video, I've tried a couple times, maybe three times. This is my third time trying. So I build somebody $10,000 to do repairs on their house. And this consistently costs homeowners thousands of dollars. This number one thing is installing the house wrap correctly. 
and you know some people like myself in the past I might have actually kind of laughed about this but it's true it can cost thousands of dollars you need to look at how trap like you look at shingles it needs to overlap downwards so water can run down it and not if this is the top piece it needs to overlap that way you can't go this way with anything that includes window nail fins you know if it doesn't cost you thousands because hey I'm just doing it myself and I'm residing I'm gonna sell it it's like I'm really disappointed in that that type of attitude we got to fix that guys you can't you got to have a moral obligation to do things correctly you can't kick it down the road and 20 years from now somebody's gonna pay 10 20 30 thousand dollars in repairs of plywood I've seen it I've done it I've experienced it guys what'll happen I'll do a little try to do a little explaining now you have a window here let's say this is a two-story house it's not but we're gonna say for the sake of argument it is the water is gonna run down this siding it's gonna collect in the J pocket at the top of the window okay J pockets like this it's gonna to run to the ends it's going to track down this edge right here and at the bottom corner it gets behind the siding there's a little demonstration i did on how to kick the side the water back out but you still need to do the house wrap correctly okay you cannot that's like in addition to doing the house wrap correctly now what happens is just running down the tie back and this will happen on any opening. It's going to happen on doors. It's going to happen on light blocks. It's going to happen on faucets. Okay. If you have a window underneath this one, or even it can be 10 feet this way laterally. It can be 10 feet that way. Water will find an edge and run along it and it'll leak in that window. If this is the window nail fan, and your Tyvek's behind it, not on top of it, where the water can run down, okay? If it's behind like that, now it's dumping inside there, and you go inside your house, you're looking up at your window jam, you're like, why is my top of my window all black and moldy? It's leaking, guys. Maybe you'll see a droplet of water or two. Maybe the floor is a little soft in front of that window. Okay, I've went inside and I've, well, not inside, but I've ripped off siding before, right? I rip off the house wrap, go to replace the window, and you can poke your finger through the plywood, through the studs, guys. It's no joke. It's mold. It can affect your health. It's, we have to do things correctly. Uh, the other thing I would note too is even small things like faucet penetrations. You can't see that one over there. I've been pointing to it. You have a penetration straight through the siding. There's not really a good way to perfectly, you can't mechanically flash that. I like to call those overlaps mechanical flashing because it physically flashes the water out. Water can't run uphill, so you know you're good. The next best option is tape and silicone, something flexible so it can move because everything is going to move. The faucet, the steel is going to heat up and move, expand and contract. Siding is going to do that, so everything is going to move a little bit. It's going to crack that caulking. You have to keep an eye on it and recalk it every year, every few years, just to make sure that you're good. Um, so that's it for now. I'm going to try eventually to link a video of proper house wrap installation. And like I said, with the siding things and all that is definitely check with the manufacturer of the Tyvek of the house wrap. Make sure that you're doing it, doing that up to their specs. Everyone can be a little different. 
Again, on commercial jobs, it changes, things change. Sometimes engineers get involved. Um, but yeah, just make sure you check with the manufacturers and follow those instructions. Um, I've had a few people also comment on, you know, how do I replace this? How do I fix that? And I thought it might be a kind of neat idea if somebody wants to fly me out there and pay me a little something to, I'll shoot a video and repair what needs to be repaired. Um, that'd be cool. You know, I'm not, I don't have a ton of money, so I can't, I'm not making money off this. Not yet anyways. Um, so yeah, if somebody wanted to do that, that'd be pretty cool. That was a neat idea. Um, and that's it guys. Also, I might try to, I had a person comment on how to fix siding that came unclipped. I don't know if I touched on that. Again, this is the third time I tried it, but if you had a piece like somewhere in the mid span or the bottom or wherever that you didn't, you accidentally didn't clip in, now you're out of luck. You're all the way at the top of the wall and you notice a piece is unclipped down there or maybe you bought your house like that. Rather than ripping the whole siding down, it could take you days to do it. I have a little, um, have a couple of tricks up my sleeve to try to avoid that. It might not work. It's not really up to par with codes and all that, but it could take you from a day or two down to just a couple hours to do the repair. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. I'll have more stuff coming up.